Hey everyone, it's Mr. Wobble 94 I hope you're doing well today. I have another book review for you. I finally finished Silent Night 3 like four or five days ago, and I finally got a review up on the Michael Goosebumps fan channel for a Things Like Goosebumps video. That's my main channel. But since I also review horror books here too, I thought I'd get these reviewed here as well, because I don't plan on rereading this, this stuff anytime soon. Um, I recently read my first ever Fear Street book, which was Silent Night from the Super Chiller Trilogy or whatever. Um, and they're like 200 pages a piece for all three of the books. Uh, I reviewed that one. I reviewed Silent Night 2 on both channels, that one and this one, the Michael Goosebumps fan channel and this one. Now I have Silent Night 3 to review on this channel. Yes, a very cool cover with the mannequins with blood on them and Reba in the middle. Um, so, this is the thing. This is the thing. Um, the first book was decent. It has a lot of problems. I hate Reva and I hate her cousin Pam. They're awful, selfish people. Well, mainly Reva. So Pam is just an idiot. She's just decent, I guess, in the first book. Uh, the second book, they both become awful, like worse than they were in the first book. Specifically, Pam becomes even worse of a character. Um, the first book is more of a robbery type of story. The second book is more of a kidnapping type of story. This one's a little bit different, honestly. This is like a straight-up murder mystery type of thing. Uh, kind of a cat and mouse game type of thing a little bit. Um, this time around, Reva, the main character that I hate and can't stand, she's a selfish brat, a rich kid, uh, just a scummy person in general. She's always stealing everybody's boyfriends from them, turning people against each other in relationships. Uh, lies to her dad all the time about stuff. He thinks she's this goody-goody two-shoes, and she's really not. She's a piece of trash. Anyway, uh, <laughs> she is coming home from college. She brought her roommate Grace, I believe is what her name was. It's been a few days since I read this. She brings her roommate Grace back to spend Christmas with her at her old, her old house since they're coming back from college. And uh, the reason she did that is because Grace, or whatever her name is, has an abusive boyfriend that she recently broke up with. His name is Rory. And eventually Rory gets the phone number and stuff out there, and he starts calling there and harassing her. You know, supposedly he's stalking her around a little bit and stalking Reva a little bit too, since they spent a lot of time together. And uh, Mr. Dalby, Reva's dad, you know, is still running his store and everything else. It's Christmas time. In the last two Christmases, Reva's been almost killed from different reasons. <laughs> you know, it's been pretty rough. Um, this was a big improvement over both books, in my opinion. It wasn't really a character improvement by any means, but it was at least all of those characters that were so bad in Silent Night 2, they're kind of not as bad here. Reva's pretty bad still, but the other ones like Pam and all those guys, they're not as bad. Some of the new characters aren't that bad either. Um, it was a tolerable story. I enjoyed it. It had a little bit of intrigue going for it too, I think. It wasn't my favorite, I will say that. Um, it, it was just about as middle of the road as you can get. It was just fine. It was just decent. I wasn't very impressed with it. Uh, it was better than the other two, in my opinion. I actually think I like this better than the other two books. Now, Reva actually has a little bit of more of a persona and a kindness to her to bring Grace along to protect her, you know? But it's not really a protective thing. It was kind of just a good gesture that she thinks she should have done because it's Christmas time. But she doesn't really pull through and follow through on that, but that makes sense because it's Reva and she's awful. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so... It turns into uh, a little bit of a side plot that becomes the main plot. Pam and her friend are actually making scarves. They've designed them, they've crafted them with their own hands, and they ask Reva to look at them, and Reva does, and she loves them, and they want her to make a business arrangement with them to try to sell them in the store, Mr. Dalby's store. Mr. Dalby was lied to by Reva when she showed him the design, saying that she designed them. And Pam and her friend kind of play along with that a little bit. Well, it eventually starts up this idea of having a modeling show essentially, to show off these new scarves and stuff that Dalby wants to have his store promote and sell. And the, the two girls are working their tail off. Reva's mostly just kind of setting up all these things for this show. And murders start to happen. Murders start to happen left and right. People start getting brutalized. Um, and probably, I would say, the most horrific way that any of these Fear Street books I've read from these three, this trilogy, or the only thing I've read... There's some great stuff in this book, killing-wise, I mean. Not that killing is good, but you know what I mean. Um, some set pieces in here are pretty good. I liked it. There's a tension running here. There's a murder mystery kind of thing going on that the previous two books really didn't have too much of an element of. It was kind of thrown in pieces of it. But this is kind of the basis of this book, you know? Tensions are running high at work. There's some competition, competition amongst Reva and the uh, models that are going to model for the show. It's a really solid read. It's not amazing. It's one of those books like Secret Santa that I recently read where there's a lot more positive than I have negative, frankly. Um, I really dug this a lot. 
It's not amazing, once again. It's about as middle of the road as it can get. It is my favorite of the three. I think it's a better book. I think it's better written. I think it's better executed in the, the kind of setup of the story. And by the way, of course, I forgot to mention this. If you want to read this book, you can read this and not read the first two. You can read the second book and not read the first one. You can do that any way you want. If you own any, any of these, you can read them. I would recommend reading this one, not the other two so much. Uh, if you're a completionist for R.L. Stein, you can pick that up too if you want. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'm not super amazed by these. I really don't have much to say about them at all. They kind of suck. <laughs> They're kind of dull. This one, not so much. Um, I'm not a Fear Street fan right now, based on these books alone. And I've heard that these books are kind of the bad ones of the bunch. I've heard, supposedly. I'm hoping that's true. I'm hoping that'll be the truth and I can really enjoy some other Fear Street books. Uh, I've read a ton of Goosebumps. I've read like half of Goosebumps that exists, if not a little bit over that, possibly. But I'll tell you, I'm I'm not impressed <laughs> so far. This is a big miss for me. Um, as a series, not this particular book, but as the other books, too. Anyway, uh, that would be Fear Street Super Chiller by R.L. Stein, Silent Night 3. It's a decent book. That's all I've got. It's not amazing. It's not horrible. It's not bad, really. It's just a decent book. If you want something to read, this is a good one. It flies by really fast, 200 pages, as are the first two books, pretty much. Um, what do you think about it? I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments down below. If I had to rate this book on a five-star basis, I'd give it a three out of five stars. Like I said, a very average, decent book. I enjoyed it. Stein has written way better books. I love the guy. He's one of my favorite writers, top three writers of all time, as a matter of fact. Love his work. Genuinely love his work. Um, it's just, this this series is a miss for me. I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't, I don't know. You can tell it's him writing is the kind of style that it has. Just the executions, the twists and stuff are a little bit better here than they are in the previous two. But overall, I'm not impressed with these series, man. I'm going to take a break from <laughs> Fear Street for a while. I've spent a lot of December spending time on these stupid books. I'm not happy with it. Uh, anyway, what are your thoughts? Put them down below, guys. Happy New Year. That'll probably be the final review I upload for 2022 or 2021. Happy 2022. I hope you enjoyed, guys. I hope you stick around and subscribe for some more reviews. I'm going to get around to that at some point. I don't know what I'm going to really start off the year with. I've kind of picked up a book and started with that. I might finish one before it. I don't know yet, but we'll see. Um, and remember, this is not just a horror channel. I'm, I'm trying to stick with horror books mainly because it's mainly what I read, but I do read a little bit of comics here and there. I'm not sure if I'm going to review all the comics I read and stuff, but uh, you'll see. <laughs> anyway, Put your thoughts and comments down below about Silent Night 3, about R.L. Stein, about Fear Street. Let me know about all those things and what you think about them. Did you like this book better than the first two if you read all three? I'd love to hear that especially too. Um, anyway, what are your thoughts? Put them down below. Thank you for watching. God bless you guys. Happy New Year once again. And goodbye.